How exciting. This is being live streamed. Got it. It is. First time I have ever done live streaming for real. Well, that's interesting. Redirecting to YouTube. Well, it uh, told me it was being live streamed. There we go. On my on my machine. All righty. I had to say OK or leave the meeting. Exactly. So it, it gives you that privacy option. So I'm just going to find it on my other computer. I've got two computers set up here. For some reason, it is not showing it. Uh, home. Oh, there we go, live. And I can go back to Zoom here. <coughs> and your beautiful, Alrighty. your beautiful well, face is on the other screen now. Yes. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to say good evening to the folks on YouTube. I use chat to that. Okay. Yep. Yep. And there is no one there <laughs> except me. No one there except you. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I did say 7.05 and it's 7.06. So we'll just give it a few minutes. Hmm. Got to reset my watch back mm. a little. Yeah. It doesn't agree with my uh, cell phone. Oh, somebody else is watching now. Ah, good. Hi. <laughs> Hello to folks who are on YouTube, uh, anybody who might watch later as well. Uh, so far, we've got uh, John over here on Zoom. Val popped in to say hello and uh, couldn't stay, but uh, welcome everyone. I'm just going to give a, a quick Zoom tutorial just for anybody who wants to try this another time. It's pretty easy. You just click on the link that's in the email that goes out to the congregation. And that will open up Zoom on your computer or your phone or your uh, tablet. And then when you have your black screen in front of you with the faces, uh, up on the right hand side, there's little boxes, kind of a square of boxes. And that's how you click on that and then you can choose what you see. So if you do speaker view, it's just the person who's speaking. If you do gallery view, you get everybody. Uh, and so you can, and you can also do full screen as well. I've never tried immersive, so I'm not even sure what that is. <laughs> not available to me. Yeah, so I think that has something to do with the live uh, uh, component. Um, we've got three watching now, hallelujah. So over on the left-hand side on the Zoom screen, there's a mute button and you can use that to obviously mute. But if you click the little arrow, that will help you check your microphones and your speakers and there's a little test speaker you can use on video there's another little arrow and you can choose a fancy background if you like uh, also participants if you click on that you can see who's on and you can uh, say hello to them you can also rename yourself by clicking more you can rename yourself if you don't like how the Zoom platform has named you, chat, you just click on chat and then you can type a message and you can choose whether it's for everyone or for a specific person. But just recall that uh, um, I've said it so that the chat shouldn't show up, but just in case, you might want to just think about that before you type anything that you don't want repeated. Uh, this is public. So any conversation we have, any chat we have will be seen by others. So that's just just like in church on Sunday. Anybody who wants to walk in can hear. Uh, there's reactions. You can applaud. You can put your thumbs up. You can give a heart and so on. You can raise your hand. Uh, and that's really all you need to know 
to use Zoom. And for those of you over on YouTube, you can either put comments in the comment section below, uh, and anyone can do that, whether you are signed in or not, I believe. But for the live chat, you need to actually be signed in, and then you can type chat there. And I'm going to try to monitor both of those. So welcome. Thanks for giving this a try, folks. And I'm going to move this over to speaker chat for now and then open it up to gallery chat again a little bit later. So we begin this evening with an acknowledgement that we are on the traditional territory of the, of the Lekwungen speaking peoples. And we are grateful to be here, to be on this beautiful land, and we are thankful for their stewardship over the long centuries. And we want to be part of the reconciliation work that Gordon United, uh, that the United Church of Canada is doing across Canada uh, to reach out to First Nations, both within our own church and outside of the church as well, to heal the wounds of the past and to find ways to move forward together. We also want to light a candle to remind us of the presence of Christ among us. And if you happen to have a candle nearby, you might want to also light a candle. It's kind of a way to mark this as worship time and space. And uh, it can sometimes help focus us in a little bit more. The light of Christ. Now I'm going to invite you to just either close your eyes or focus on your candle and take a few deep breaths as we begin. Some readings from Holy Scripture. Isaiah 2, verse 4. The Lord will mediate between nations and will settle international disputes. They will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will no longer fight against nation nor train for war anymore. From Philippians. Chapter four, verses six to seven. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And a promise from the 14th chapter of John verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So today is Peace Sunday. It's the first day of an, an international week designated by the UN to focus on disarmament in general and nuclear disarmament in particular. And for Gordon United, it was also Gratitude Sunday this morning, uh, celebrating the blessings that fill our lives 
And of course, as Canadians, one of the biggest blessings we have is that there has not been war on our soil for over 200 years. That's a really long time to live in a place that is mostly peaceful. We have gone to war, but we have not had war on our soil. A few weeks from now, it's going to be Remembrance Day, of course, and we're going to remember the price of the freedom that we live by now. Last Sunday, I turned on Crave TV and uh, put on the series Band of Brothers, which some of you may have seen um, many years ago when it was first filmed. I only just found out about it a few months ago. Uh, it's about Easy Company of the U.S. Army, 101st Airborne Division, during the last two years of the Second World War in Europe. And it is riveting. It combines the, the reflections of actual veterans uh, with the stories of their lives as young soldiers. I was so hooked, I actually watched the program for 11 hours straight. And I finally didn't watch the last hour because it was 11 o'clock at night and I had to get up to go to work the next morning. So I still have one hour left to watch, which I hope to watch tonight. <laughs> Well, when I think of peace, I think of a world where no one, no one, no man, no woman, no child has to go to war and go through the kinds of experiences that those soldiers did. That there is no need for weapons at all, uh, where bombs have been disassembled and sold for scrap metal and guns have been turned into trowels and garden implements. We don't seem to ever get any closer to that, though, do we? It, it seems like we keep reaching for it, but there's always some power, some authority that wants to exert influence in the political area and over land and over people's freedom. Or somebody who wants to divert attention from what's going on in their own country by starting a war somewhere else. And there always, of course, needs to be someone to stop those powers from hurting others. So we're still pretty far away from that beautiful dream of peace that we have been hanging on to for centuries, I think, as human beings. It can be really troubling at times, especially for those who find themselves having to pay the greatest price for that struggle. So in the face of all of that, when I think about peace, when I think about it on the global scale and, and realize how, how ineffectual sometimes we can feel when faced with all that, I think it's important to cultivate peace in our hearts and in our spirits um, as we go into every day, every week. And I think by doing so, by, by developing peaceful hearts and peaceful minds, we're less likely to get sucked into the manipulations of those who want violence and who want destruction. So my hope is that perhaps these evening reflections might pay, play a small part in helping to achieve some peace at the end of our days and at the beginning of another work week for some. Jesus, of course, promised the gift of peace to his disciples and that promise belongs to us too, but it's not just in the next life when it's all over. It's something we can have in our hearts day by day. By walking closer with Jesus and spending time in prayer and meditation and song and listening to music and just simply being quiet together, we can become more peaceful people, I hope. Sometimes just taking a little time out reminds us that we don't need to fix everything that's wrong in the world. That's God's job that we don't have to strive for everything or control everything. And that sometimes we can just rest in God and let our friend Jesus prop us up for a bit, support us as we lean into his strength and his holiness so that we can find that strength and that courage for the next day. So that's why I begin the service with deep breathing. And now I'm going to invite us to listen to some quiet music. And this is music by our wonderful Tim Alford at the church. And I'm just going to put up the copyright information by showing it to the camera. That's my legal obligation to show what we're going to listen to. 
and I'm going to do a share screen and we're going to listen to some of Tim's music. Except that somehow it disappeared. I will find it. I had it open. There we go. It disappeared on me again. Let me try it again. Share screen. Where'd it go? There we go, share. That should be it. There we go, share. That should be it. I'm on a loop here. figure out what's going on here okay okay I'm going to turn off okay best laid plans what happened was um sorry got to switch microphones here so what happened was that the Zoom reopened on this computer so that I had both the YouTube live playing and the music and the Zoom all playing at the same time. So I ended up with a loop. <laughs> that didn't work so well. I'm going to try it one more time and see if I can get it to work. And then if not, I will I will give that up. Okay, it's not going to work. So I will try something different for next week. <laughs> Life is always interesting. I'm going to try doing this another way. No, I'm not. I think it's going to be too complicated. So instead, we'll just move on to some group reflection, except that we don't have a big group. So 
I just give a chance for anyone. Uh, I don't know, John, if you have any comments about what peace means to you or what, um, how your faith impacts the search for peace. And I will ask those over here on YouTube if they have any thoughts about that as well. I remember 7-Eleven when Michael was in the middle of Lake Erie and uh, my wife was driving out to Nipawan from Saskatoon yeah. through the fall uh, harvests and the smoke of burning stubble. Mm. And there was nothing coming across anything. And the fear of the lack of peace hitting us directly mm. came through. And when Michael was out in the middle of Lake Erie, they had no communication with anybody being a military ship. Mm. Michael had to climb up the mast uh, with a coat hanger wire and a made a TV antenna so that he could pick up TV from across the water. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> so the need to talk about it and be in communication is tremendous, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. particularly in something as dastardly is the lack of peace <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah i'm not seeing any comments over on youtube that's okay i had one other very minor one yeah i was flying back from new new zealand when the gulf war broke out Ooh. and um knowing i was going to do that i uh, was had was given a gurry which is a large uh sikh um uh, machete knife, oh my uh of war yeah uh from uh, an uh, relative who was uh of the malay uh, was uh Commissioner of Malay States. In that mm. time. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I figured out the last thing, uh, last moment to give it to the War Museum of Auckland rather than carry it in my luggage. Good plan. But the second thing was, my sister had taken some uh, goods from the household and was uh, giving them to us to fly back with them and which i did and got stopped in uh, los angeles mm. on the way back uh, with an indication that uh, uh, volatile um, explosives might be hidden in my bags so they were hunting through it that opened up the things and eventually we figured out with the uh then was my uh, my sister had polished uh a silver tray with silvo and uh the fumes from it having pol been polished uh, smelt to the detectors just like something like Semtex. Oh my goodness. Um, but when the bag was opened and the uh, plastic was taken out from it and the, it, it all evaporated and they couldn't find it, the scent, the scent anymore. Huh. And I got back just in time uh, to catch the plane from Los Angeles to Vancouver. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that's my experience with wartime. Yeah. 
Yeah, a little different for us than for some previous generations, for sure. Yes. Yeah. So I think we'll uh, just take some time in prayer. And uh, my intention was to just kind of let people offer prayer as we go. So I'll simply begin with an opening silence. And if you'd like to offer prayer, John, that's wonderful. If not, don't feel like you have to or anyone else. And uh, we'll just offer prayer and then we'll finish off with the Lord's Prayer. And at that point in time, I'm going to invite you to mute your microphone so that we can all say whichever version of the Lord's Prayer we're most comfortable with this evening, since there are, there is more than one, which some people don't realize. So, <laughs> so let's just uh, take some time in prayer. Grant all of us an eventual freedom from the scourge of COVID. Mm. Mm -hmm. And in particular, my family across the other side of Canada. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I'm praying for families that are in friendships that are being strained by different responses to the pandemic and just the sense of frustration that people feel and not knowing what to say or do and and how to be together with such different opinions and different approaches and praying that your spirit of wisdom and peace will enter into that situation I think of those who are not sheltered or improperly sheltered tonight as the storm blows in across the island and pray for their safety and well-being and give thanks for all of the places that open their doors so that people can come in out of the wet and the cold. Bless them. Beloved God, we thank you for the wonders of technology and the ways that we can find to connect and communicate with one another. We thank you for the ways that we've learned how to do these things over the last couple of years and the possibilities it opens up for things like a brother in England being able to attend his sister's service in Langford. What a blessing that is. And we pray as we move into this evening hours and then to sleep that we will be able to rest in your peace and be refreshed to begin another day. This and all of the prayers of our hearts we offer in the name of Jesus. And we pray whichever prayer feels the most appropriate to us at this time. I'm trying to remember the words of the, the little rhyme that we used to sing in guides. I guess it wasn't guides, it was brownies because I never made it as far as guides. It was day is done, gone the sun from the lake, from the hills, from the sky. All is well, safely rest. God is nigh. So go in peace and thanks for joining in, John. Otherwise Perfect. it would be pretty lonely for me out here. We'll try again next week and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, thanks to the uh, three others for joined us with um, uh, YouTube. Yes, thank Bye. you to you. I don't know who you are because you haven't put your name in, but thank you for joining us and God bless you.
Good night, everyone.